All right, this is going to be a review of the Chapter 5, uh, Verifying Trig Identities, Finding Exact Value. So we start off by finding the exact value of these. Now, these problems, uh, they're set up in such a way to where, you know, if you just recognize that we replace the 65 with A and the 55 with B, you can see that this is an exact representation of your sign some form of addition. So what we're thinking, this is no different than sine of A plus B. I mean, that's in essence what this is an expansion of. So what we're doing is we're taking this back and condensing it into this format. But we're not going to say A and B. We're going to say 65 and 55. So you had 65 and 55, you get 120. And then we just ask ourselves, okay, what's the sine of 120? Well, one way to find out is to draw a 120 degree angle. Uh, let's make this a little more accurate. 120 degree angle is going to have a reference of 60. So what would probably be wise is if we just said, okay, this is no different than the sine of 60, but you're in quadrant 2. So 60, or I should say sine in quadrant 2, is always positive. We're just going by the ASTC. And then figure out what the sine of 60 is. Or another way is you could actually draw your reference triangle in quadrant two. Just label your opposite and adjacent sides with their plus and minus signs accordingly. So um, how this works, the side opposite, the 30 would be one, but we're in quadrant two, so that's negative one. That's the square root of three, and that's two. So we would say that the sine of 60 is opposite over hypotenuse. You're looking at the square root of 3 over 2. Final answer. Letter B. This has the same kind of feel as A does. Again, we'll just say this kind of acts like the A, that acts like the B. So over here, we got another A, another B. This is exactly the cosine, we would say, some form of. In other words, cosine A plus B. Because remember, this would be the opposite of this for cosine. For sine, it's the same. For cosine, it's the opposite. Very important. That would be a very bad turn if you actually subtracted these. So we're looking at the cosine of A, call it pi thirds, plus 5 pi twelfths. It's playing the role of B. Uh, you get common denominators here. Um, cosine, uh, we're looking at what, 4 pi twelfths? 4 pi twelfths plus 5 pi twelfths. Just getting common denominators here. Multiply top and bottom of this one by 4. That gives us a grand total of 9 pi twelfths. Pi twelfths, or more simply, the cosine of 3 pi fourths. Okay, the next question is, what is 3 pi fourths? Well, Remember, 3 pi fourths multiplied by 180 over pi. We're looking at oh, 135. Another way to do this is think of, well, let's put it this way. Think of pi fourths as 45. We're looking for three of those, three of those 45 degree angles. That's 135 degrees. So your next move, what's well, a 135 degree angle? Well, that. And there's an angle to put to you again in quadrant two. Reference this time is 45. Let's just work with quadrant two. The isosceles right triangle, the 45, 45, 90, goes 1, 1, square root of 2. But since you're in quadrant two, the x coordinate is negative, the y coordinate is positive. So cosine of 135, um, we'd be looking at um, adjacent over hypotenuse negative 1 over the square root of 2, or rationalize negative square root of 2 over 2. Okay. Letter C. You have something that looks very suspicious, similar to, I would say, our tangent difference formula. You can see the A and the B. So this would be the tangent of A Sorry, did I say some formula? I meant 
minus a difference formula. This would be tangent of A minus B. All right. So tangent A minus B, in this case, the A is 28 pi fifteenths, and the B is pi fifths. So again, getting common denominators, we would say this is tangent of 28 pi fifteenths minus three pi fifteenths. Subtract, you get 25 pi fifteenths. 25 pi fifteenths in lowest terms would be five pi thirds. All right, five pi thirds, again, the shortcut. I mean, we can always go back to this, just multiply by 180 over pi, but pi thirds is 60 degrees. That would be one to definitely remember. 60 times 5 is 300. So, assuming I'm not writing too far, the tangent of 300 degrees becomes the problem that we're trying to do here. So, we draw a picture. 300 degrees puts us in quadrant 4 with the reference of, no surprise, 60 degrees. So, if we deal with a 60 degree angle in quadrant 4, uh, the side opposite the 30 would be the 1. Hypotenuse is 2. This will be square root of 3, but actually it's going to have to be negative square root of 3 because that would be your y coordinate. So what is a tangent? Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So we're looking at negative square root of 3 over 1 or negative square root of 3.